Good afternoon, everybody. We're getting ready to get started. Uh, today's training is Keto 101 with a cooking demo. Uh, today, the training is being provided by Clean Eatery, and they have worked, we've worked on several occasions before, and we have Mr. Ryan Eric McGee. There are some printouts, and once those get printed, I will bring those up to y'all in a few seconds. If y'all have any questions, be sure to ask us. All right. You'll have to forgive me. Traffic took me like 40 extra minutes to get here today, so uh, I was hoping to have all this set up before you got here. So the, my favorite question to get started with, with people who have done keto or are interested in trying keto is, what is keto? So that's the, that's the first question I have for you. Any, anybody know what exactly keto is? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, basically, the ketogenic diet is a diet that helps your body to instantly healthy. Uh huh. Pretty much kind of like a survival mode where uh, at every time of the day, instead of burning glucose, which comes from carbohydrates, you're burning fats. That's correct. So, keto isn't necessarily the food you eat or the style of food, but it's the state of actually being in ketosis. That's right. Everybody I ask that question usually says it's where you eat high fat, low carbs, you know, or they say, well, I did the South Beach diet this one time. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing. Every body has a completely separate metabolism for ketosis. Now, those of you who have smartphones, I encourage you to go online and check out uh, Keto Buddy. It's all one word, ketobuddy.com. Then there's a calculator you click on and it will pull up a ketogenic calculator specific to your body type. You enter your height, your body weight, what your actual activity is like. Now, if you're the kind of person who just goes and walks once or twice throughout the week, that is not active. That is, that is moderate activity at best. Now, if you're going to the gym three days a week and your goal is focused on burning 500 calories or more, that's where we get into moderate active and up, okay? So when you go to this site, you're able to plug this information in and it will give you a base to go off of, all right? Now, even before you get further into that, I recommend you do the research of what is your body's basal metabolic rate. It's also BMR, BMR short, uh, that's what your metabolism is, the rate at which you burn calories right now, sitting right where you are. No activity. When you find out what your basal metabolic rate is, then you kind of can be able to get your food nutrition-wise to fit within that. So what she's passing out right now is going to be some examples of an overview. Um, there's also a few sample daily menus that are in there, you'll notice that every value that's in an ingredient is accounted for. There's also an ingredients page in the very back. The ingredients page has all of the different kinds and their exact values. Now when you're following a ketogenic diet or you transition from the keto diet back into a regular you know, healthy basis, you want to know what the value of everything you eat is based on portion sizes, right? That's the biggest reason why we end up, in general, overeating in the first place is because we don't, uh, we're not able to clearly identify what a portion size is based on those nutritional values. When you walk in and you look at the calorie content on the wall or on a menu somewhere standing in line, you're not getting the best assessment of what your body can actually process. But knowing your body before you start looking at those values is more important. Does that make sense? So one thing that we've done at the Clean Eatery, and this is a company that we've built not just on nutritional value, but the reverse aspect is what is right for your body type, okay? So what's right for me is different from you, is different from the person to your left or your right. It's also different from my wife, who's 115 pounds, 5'6", eats like junk, and doesn't work out at all, you know? I don't get it. There's a difference in being healthy and being skinny. And there's a difference in just being healthy overall. 
So being healthy isn't necessarily when we talk about your heart health. It talks about digestive health. It talks about gut health. It talks about liver health. It talks about the pH balance within your system in which you can achieve so that you can balance out acidities or imperfections or cancer causing things there. You know, it's really tough in our modern day and age with all of the social media and exposure we have to modern, you know, statements of medicine from what is healthy, but yet the thing they tell you is healthy is in unhealthy for you two weeks later from a different department. You ever feel that way? Yeah. So what it is is being able to identify within your body what those are. So we're going to start with the body's digestive tract. Your metabolism is controlled based on your activity. It's derived from your endocrine system. Your endocrine system is what produces insulin or controls your blood sugar. It also is your liver. It controls your uh, cholesterols, your healthy cholesterol and your unhealthy cholesterol. It's the gut bacteria, the probiotics and prebiotics within your intestine system. It's your uh, intestinal tract, what can absorb different nutritional values from the types of food that you eat. The ketogenic diet means that we have to control our body's blood sugar. You nailed that one right there. You control your body's blood sugar by controlling your body's insulin production. Is anybody in here a diabetic or borderline? Ever lived with a diabetic? Experienced any of that struggle? So diabetics have a inhibition within their body that cannot produce insulin, right? Therefore, they have to take insulin to balance that glucose level within their, their body. Different types of foods have different amount of sugar. So when I say sugar, most people think in general, what is sugar? Okay, so I'm gonna ask you that. Who can name me five different sources of sugar? Food yeah, food-wise. <laughs> when you think sugar, what do you think of? Bread. Potatoes. What else? Fruit. Fruit is sugar. What else? Candy. That's obviously identifiable as sugar, right? But there's sugar in every single thing that you do. There's sugar in mayonnaise. There's sugar in ketchup. There's sugar in, you know, the hot sauce. There's sugar in the breading or flour, you know, gluten, stuff like that. But your body isn't able to say, oh, that's candy. Oh, that's that. Oh, that, it's, it, your body isn't, it's, it doesn't have a brain to tell it that. Sugar is sugar, no matter what form it comes in, no matter what form you consume it in, whether it's a sweet tea, or it's a piece of fruit, a banana, an apple. You know, how many of you have heard bananas are super fruit? You know, they're high in potassium, rich in iron, niacin, they're very good overall. The problem is, is that they are also one of the highest sugars. The amount of sugar it has, you might as well eat like a couple of those snack packs of M&Ms. Same amount of sugar, wow. but based on how your body sees it, right? But those M&Ms don't have those healthy properties, right? You still need those vitamins and minerals. That's why it's considered a healthy food group. Totally different kind. So when we talk about the keto diet and how it can not only change you, you know, to feed on fat, but it also changes you so that it actually eats your body fat, which is derived from sugar. It's a synthetic sugar, right? So fat is a synthetic sugar, okay? It's just in a different form. So when your body needs energy, what does it do? It craves things, right? How many of you drink coffee? How many drink coffee every day? How many of you wake up in the morning and you're like, damn, I need a cup of coffee, you know? <laughs> How many of you uh, about energy drinks? Or you take smoothies? You know, all these types of things that you get can have that caffeine in there. That's synthetic energy. You keep putting synthetic energy in your body, what happens when it runs out? It crashes. It crashes, that's right. And when it crashes, do you feel bad? What do you think a meth head feels like when their body runs out of methamphetamine? I'm going to be real with you. Sugar is just the same as you being a meth head. Okay? You just have to learn it, what you can do to control those cravings, those needs, that crash, that soda, that caffeine. What is it that your body is that you're craving that you're about to crash on? So with the keto diet, 
we're able to eliminate a lot of those cravings and those ups and downs and crashes is because you're not allowing your body's blood sugar to spike. You're not getting a whole bunch of sugar rush. You know, when you were a kid, I know your mom said, don't you eat that, you're gonna get a sugar rush or you're gonna have to burn that out, you know? You don't get to do that as an adult now, right? Unless you're the one getting off work, gonna go bike 25 miles before you get in the car and go home. You know, totally different. So let's reverse all this and just put it into good basic whole nutrition, right? Now, instead of me going and roasting a whole chicken and pulling it all and stuff like that, I decided to come here with ingredients that you can literally walk in the grocery store today, buy, go home, and make several of in different containers. You can package them up if you want. I did this with the intention of showing you that it is so easy to do, okay? So I went to Sam's Club today and I bought uh, whole eggs. And then we took all of the, the yolks out of them. You ever make deviled eggs? Yeah. Who in here loves deviled eggs? Everybody, right? Everybody. But you can take that and you can make those very simply one step healthier for you. Eggs are full of two different kinds of cholesterols, right? Can anybody name me the two types of cholesterols there are? Which one's the healthy one? No, the HDL. H, think healthy cholesterol. HDL, healthy cholesterol. That's right. I guess so. <laughs> it stands for low density, so. <laughs> So low down, that's no, no good, you know. So when we're talking about these different kinds of cholesterols, it's like one's going to clog your, your arteries, okay? One's going to, and the other one's going to be like Pac-Man running around eating it up. So that HDL, imagine your blood vessels are like a Pac-Man game. Those HDLs running all up and down, just chewing it all up, okay? Those are the good kind. Those are the ones you want in your life. What has... HDL cholesterols in it. What types of foods? Uh, avocado. Avocado. Is avocado a fruit or a vegetable? Uh, it's a fruit. That's right. What is what? Is, what else do fruits have? Sugar. Uh, That's right. Sugar. <laughs> so that is a double-edged sword on a keto diet. It's good and it's bad, but you can also buy just plain avocado oil, right? So which route do you want to go when it's time to increase that healthy cholesterol in your body? You're going to switch. You're going to get rid of those corn oils because those are the, ba those are the LDLs, right? Have you bought that stuff? It's like 14 bucks. <laughs> you ever bought cholesterol medication without insurance? <laughs> it's like $200 a bottle. <laughs> you know? That's right. It's healthier, you know? We're, we're not going to put a Band-Aid on this stuff. We're, we're going to find the root problem and fix it. That's what this Keto 101 is about. It is that way, but you don't need more than a tablespoon yeah. of it. You don't go and fry <laughs> catfish in it, you know? <laughs> we're not frying stuff in it, so we're just going to eliminate that. Okay? The olive oil is another one, right? That's a healthy cholesterol. What's another healthy cholesterol? Heart healthy. Coconut oil. What else? What's another one? Think protein. Peanut is it's 50-50. It, usually peanut oils are in blends. Nope, canola oil is bad. So that's a bad oil. So we've got salmon. Salmon's got omega-3s. Those omega-3s are heart healthy. Now the problem with salmon is you go to the grocery store, you go to Sam's Club, you see that big filet of salmon in there, right? How many of you ever bought that? You're like, I get this big filet of salmon, $22. It's farmed catfish, or farmed salmon. The problem with farmed fish is that it's fed miracle grow pellets, fat pellets. And it grows fast, right? They're farm feeding it to grow with such speed and such size, and then they start to add dyes into it. That's how a uh, flamingo turns pink, is all the, sh all the shrimp that it eats, right? Well, they do the same thing with salmon. They start adding that dye in there, and so it changes their bright color so that the meat of the salmon is actually dyed pink. Just like when you get beef. You know, if you've ever ground beef, fresh beef, there is a red gel in the bottom of the package, 
that's globulin, that is there, it's a dye that also kills bacteria. They injected it directly into the meat. And so when you actually empty it out, that's not blood, that's globulin, okay? It's synthetic. So if you, there's a difference, grass-fed beef, fresh ground beef, savers beef. You know what I mean? They're completely different. Yeah, it's half the price, but it's also got half the real ingredients in there, okay? If you take a whole cow and you cut it down, the hanging weight of a healthy carcass is around 680 pounds of lean meat. But most cows that go to butcher, especially these Sabres brands, are 13 to 1,500 pounds. They're twice the size. And they don't trim all that fat off of there. They go through and they butcher it, they cut the fat off, they ground the lean, they ground the fat, and then they mix the two together. You see those labels that are like 80, 20, 75, 30, you know, I mean, you get the math on there. Thank you, 70, 30, thank you. <laughs> but you'll see these different values and that is the fat content of that particular animal. Now, if you're like me, you know that the fat tastes good, right? But as I just showed you, there's ways to add healthy fats in there. You can go and you can get that lean beef and then you can add a tablespoon of coconut oil or a tablespoon of avocado oil into the mix when you're mixing it all up. Make a patty, go grill that thing. It'll be just as flavorful. Right. You just won't have all that LDL unhealthy cholesterol that you're consuming at that point. Okay? So the other thing is, is like barbecue. When we barbecue meat, even us at the clean eatery, we will literally smoke pork tenderloins or pork shoulders or butts or ribs We'll load them up and cook them for 18 hours. And it's so that all of that fat in all those layers will break down and it will melt out of there. Now we cook it at about 240 and just let it cook all night long. That way it's nice and fresh. The next day we'll pull it, let all that fat drip off of it. And we usually save that for other things. You know, it's really good at cleaning grills and stuff like that. But, uh, if you take all of those drippings that you have, uh, meatloaf, for example. Y'all ever roast meatloaf? You put it in a pan and cook it. All that juice that cooks out of it, right, into the bottom, you can save that. You can keep pouring it into a container, right? And then when you refrigerate it, what happens with all that? Yeah, it separates, right? Usually you got a thick, uh, thick stock in the bottom and then you get that white fat layer on top, right? Scrape that fat off. Keep that stock. We use that to flavor our rice. We use it in our quinoa. We use it in our soup. And then if you take it and you throw in some celery and onions and carrots and mirepoix, you can make an excellent roux, an excellent chili base, you know, make some beans and rice and stuff like that. But you don't have to go through and add a whole bunch of synthetic flavors to bring all that flavor up, okay? So you can add that flavor back into things. So that's kind of what we're gonna do here right now with this chicken. Now, how many of y'all like buffalo chicken? I love it. Yeah? I love it. A little bit of uh, Red's hot sauce, Frank's hot sauce. It's not spicy, right? Louisiana. Louisiana's a different way to go with that, absolutely. We've got our healthy oils here. Can you have cheese on a keto diet? Yeah, why? It's high in fat. Is it a healthy cholesterol or an unhealthy cholesterol? That's right, depends on the cheese. Now, this here is an organic Amish blue crumble. It's naturally raised, naturally produced, naturally drawn. What is it called? It's an Amish blue cheese. It's just blue cheese. But there's different kinds of blue cheese. There's synthetic blue cheese that you can buy. You know, they're, it's in wheels, it's processed and stuff like that. A lot of times it'll be extra bright white and have little bits of blue in there. Whereas this here is more natural. Once it's exposed, it starts to turn more blue and gold. And you want that. The highest quality you can get is Maytag. So if you want to go and spend 40 bucks a wheel, you can do that too. 
Uh, I'm not all about that. Uh, with your deviled eggs here, this is a combination of the egg yolks, which is your amino acids, okay? What are amino acids? <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Almost all of them, the answers, right? Amino acid are proteins. They're the essential proteins that your body requires for life. This right here. You can buy it in powder form or you can eat it. One or the other. Vegans tend to have real low bone density structure because of lack of calcium or vitamin D within their body. Because of that, their body does not absorb the proper amount of BCAAs, branched chain amino acids. They're essential for your body to actually receive the proteins that you're about to eat. Okay? So think of Velcro, right? Velcro is one thing, right? It's used for one thing and one thing only, besides picking up dog hair. But there's two parts of it, right? If I grabbed a piece of that Velcro and stuck it right on here, just half of it, would it stick? No. No. If I took the other half and slammed it on here, would it stick? <laughs> but if I took the two and I smushed them together, you have a bond, right? That is considered a covalent bond. Welcome to science. Now we're going to take that bond, you got a hook side and you got a loop side, right? And they're going to mesh and they're going to hook together. And then when your body's exercising, you're playing with the kids, you got to walk up 35 flights of stairs to get up here. That is if you come in the back side, you got to go up and down and up and down and back up. Ain't that right? Yeah. <laughs> but your body needs that extra energy. Where is that body getting the energy from? Carbohydrates, right? But you don't have any of those in your body, right? Because you're on a keto diet. What about fat? It's going to start drawing some from fat, right? But that's weak energy. Weak. It's like a battery. It's going to run out fast. Okay? It has to be recharged. Okay? Where else does it pull energy from? muscle mass, right? So that bond that is there with that Velcro in your system, it rips it apart <laughs> violently. And that violent reaction that's released is energy, okay? Without BCAAs in your system, protein as an energy is useless. You eat it, your insulin spikes because it can't process it, it stores it in your liver, then when your liver is full, just like a cup, it has to store that overflow somewhere, and it stores it right there on me. And there. And there. And there. And there. And here. Okay? That's what happens when that runneth over. This is where obesity starts to take form. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're not eating lean chicken. It's that your body can't do anything with it not able to synthesize the energy that you need okay so this is where that balance comes in when you look at your sheet here I don't know what order you have those in <clears throat> I'm gonna pick this one up here I'm gonna take these gloves off here for a sec all right are all these in the same order okay cool all right this starts out here with the ingredients on the page flip past that flip past that You'll get to the menu pages, menu pages, menu pages. Very, very last page. Here we go. Everybody to the last page. Now, I encourage you, if you're interested in this keto diet, click onto that website I started you out with. It's ketobuddy.com, and then click on the calculator. Type in your age. Pick your sex, pick your activity level, put in your body type. If you don't know what your basal metabolic rate is, that's fine too. You can go to Five Star Nutrition down the road. They have an in-body scan. You can see a lot of clinics or gyms around here. They have what's called a DEXA scan or they have a caliper test to find out what is your body fat. Okay, 
I know what an average person is by looking at them. I've got a little over 3,000 clients. So I've, I've seen the variables within there. So we can usually load them in pretty close to where they're supposed to be. A healthy body type for a female is somewhere around 23 to 28 BMI. 20, 23% body fat would be a healthy you know, body fat. That doesn't mean that your organs are healthy though. That just means you may be carrying less body fat, right? For a guy, a healthy body fat is 17 to 19% because we carry it differently, okay? Uh, when we look at this, you'll see up there at the top where it says calories to consume. It has 20 net carbs. Net carbs is minus the fiber. So if you're gonna look at the label of something and it says there are five grams of carbohydrates, below that it'll say fiber, it may be three. You subtract the fiber and that's how many net you have. So that would be two grams of carbohydrates. So if you're only allowed 20 a day, that's three M&Ms, okay? <laughs> Wrap your mind around that. That is three net grams for the whole entire day. When we're talking about protein, an average one ounce of lean protein is between 6.7 and 7.9 grams of protein. <coughs> Let's go with the average, which is chicken. If you take this here and you look at the ingredients page, okay, it's around here somewhere. We were just there. It's on the front, isn't it? Yep, there it is. It's on the back of the front page. Chicken breast boneless is 8.8 .8 grams of protein per one ounce. That is per one ounce cooked, not pre-cooked, okay? So based on your body type, if you look at that, that initial page where it says 83 grams of protein for the whole day, how many ounces of chicken can you have for the whole day? About 10 grams, right? Or 10 ounces, right? And how much is an average chicken breast by itself? So the organic chicken breasts are smaller. Those are usually somewhere around 10 ounces. If you eat one whole chicken breast in one setting, you're eating almost 10 ounces. That's your whole day's worth of protein content, okay? So here's the thing. There's a way around that though, right? You ever go out to eat at Chinese restaurants? How much you like that Chinese food? It's so good. There's sugar in everything there. Sugar, 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 sugar. Yeah, you can almost make it a song. Oh, sugar, sugar, do, 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 do. That's right. Sing it to me now. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's two things that cause your body to produce insulin. One is protein and the other is carbohydrates, right? Now, if we can lock in and say, all right, we're only allowed this much for the whole entire day, that does not include the vegetables that you eat for the day, right? That does not include the sauces that you add on there you feel like you may be starving at this point. You say, well, Ryan, what do I do differently? How do I get the rest of my food and not feel hungry? I don't care. You're in ketosis, right? Your objective at this point is to eat to live, right? So either your entire day you can have that one 10 ounce chicken breast or you can put a recipe together, which is what we're gonna do here, cool? The, my point of a Chinese restaurant is how small do they cut that chicken up? They chop it and they cut it smaller, and they cut it smaller than that, right? So that way one scoop, you get this pile of chicken, but it's only like three ounces. So it's all in how it's prepared. You leave a chicken breast whole or a steak whole, you can eat the whole thing and you're not gonna feel as full. However, we have shredded chicken, right? You can shred that chicken up just fine. We can mix in a few other fun ingredients and we're gonna have some pretty good stuff, right? Have a whole recipe. All right, so with that being said, uh, I've got some deviled eggs here for everybody. You guys help yourself. This is the egg yolk. 
mixed with two tablespoons of avocado oil, one half of an avocado mashed, and then just a little dab of mustard, paprika, and I like to go a little bit further. This is a truffle, uh, it's a truffle dust. You like truffles? Truffles are a mushroom. Anyway, it's just a dust. Adds a little bit of change of flavor for it. But I also added in there this MCT powder, okay? How we mentioned how fat is an energy. It's a weak energy, but it's an energy, right? This is a way of doing it with creating less calories so you're not eating a bunch of unhealthy fats. You can add this directly into your coffee. You can add this into your smoothie. You can add it into your sauces. You can't taste it. There's no flavor to it. It'll just dissolve. It's powdered HDLs is what it is. So this is something you can find at any nutritional store. When you're doing a keto diet, this is super helpful. We make fat bombs where you take pure cocoa, chocolate. You can add it in with some stevia, get some liquid stevia. You can add a couple tablespoons of this in together. So that way you've now sweetened it. So you have that element. Then you can take some peanut butter or PB2, the powdered peanut butter, sprinkle some of that in there, mix it up over medium heat, and then you can pour it in a bunch of little ramekin cups or ice cube trays, stick it in the freezer, and now you've got what we call our Reese's peanut butter fat bombs. Super healthy. There's less than one gram of carbohydrate to it. Tastes just like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Is there really a lose-lose in that situation? Other than taking the 10 minutes to make it? Not so much. So this here is a healthy tool to keep handy. Uh, I want to say this is about $17, and this lasts me about three months, and I use it as an ingredient for a lot of foods. So you've got your branch chain amino acids, you've got your medium chain triglycerides. Now some people struggle because their liver doesn't function fast. They've got a very slow liver, or you've heard gut health, leaky gut. You know, your metabolism isn't running very fast. Maybe you're extremely sensitive to insulin production, okay? People who drink a lot of caffeine are hypersensitive to insulin production, which means that a normal person that drinks a black cup of coffee, their insulin can spike as much as 15 to 22 uh, cc's of insulin, okay? That's not a whole lot, is it? Now, if I have sugar in my coffee and I eat a pastry with it, and my body is hypersensitive to insulin production at this point, instead of producing a healthy, what should be around 60 to 80 cc's of insulin, it's now producing 230, 280, 310. The same amount that you would need to run 30 miles physically on foot to burn off. All you did was make one decision different, okay? Hypersensitivity to, ca uh, to, to insulin production can come from caffeine really quickly. So if you're a caffeine drinker and you're doing it fasted, which means no food in your diet whatsoever, it'll actually speed up your resting metabolic rate. So it'll be like you went and ran 30 miles. Your metabolism will be really moving right along really quickly. So when you're going to do a keto diet, you want to do an intermittent fasted routine. What does intermittent fasted mean? Somebody. Uh -huh. Or you don't eat like breakfast, you might eat like lunch at like 1 o'clock or something. Uh-huh. And then you like might not eat again until like 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. So that's a good example of timeline. Intermittent fasted basically means that you take all of your meals that you're going to eat and you smash them into a smaller window. Same nutritional value, right? You're not going to starve. <laughs> but what's going to happen during that time frame is your blood sugar is going to flatline. You ever fear ir you ever fear ir feel irritable? You ever feel grouchy because you hadn't eaten? You tell your kids, you better stay back. I haven't eaten in all day. I've been doing the 10:30 to 6:30, and uh, by the time 10:30 gets here, yeah, I'm like, uh, y'all better back off. <laughs> so what this is is that is a symptom of your body actually trying to adjust to the lack of blood sugar. Yeah. Now. You do it long enough, you get a headache, right? Yeah. Damn, my head hurts. I don't feel good. 
don't bother me. I, I, I can't even think straight. I'm so hungry. Well, guess what? It's a habit. It's like being weaned off of drugs. You just got to stop. You got to drink more water if you're feeling hungry. You got to stay away. You got to tell everybody, hey, look, I'm going through some stuff right now in life. <laughs> and if you love me and you support me in my endeavors in this life, you will stay the heck away from me because I might actually snap and punch you in the teeth. You know, I'm going to throw hands real fast. Life's going to change. But here's the thing. You do that through routine and you get to the point where you can actually bury that blood sugar level. Now you can actually start focusing on glycogen level depletion. Okay? So in order for you to actually get into ketosis, you got to go through that. You got to go through that for a few days. That headache, your stomach hurts, your anxiety, maybe your heart's beating faster. You're like, I'm going to die. I haven't eaten since six o'clock yesterday. You just got to push through it. But you do that a few days in a row. Now your body's going to say, where else can I pull energy from? I'm not getting it from food. I'm addicted to food, but I'm not getting the energy from there. Where's it going to start pulling energy from? We aren't to the fat yet. Not yet. We're not there yet. Remaining carbs. Remaining stored as glycogen, which is not glucose, but it's the storage form of glucose, right? In your liver. Okay? Liver controls your cholesterol. It controls your whole entire endocrine system. You will not live without a liver. Period. The end. You will not. A lot of people start to develop, you know, at late stages of obesity, fatty liver syndrome, where their liver actually turns into fat because there's so much glycogen left over. Okay? That's where doctors have to open you up, go in, cut half your liver off, take it and throw it away, and your body has to readjust to the functionality of the healthy cells that are left in there. How many of you ever done a detox? That detox is targeted at a several day repetition to burn out the glycogen levels left in your liver. Your liver's right there, under that rib. You ever been hit there? It hurts, it'll paralyze you, it hurts. Uh, I've been boxing for about three years now. That'll change your life, everything you ever knew about life. But here's the thing, guys. You have to go through that hunger phase it may be helped speed it along by doing intermittent fasted, but now once it runs through that liver, then it can go on to ketones. That's where your body is uh, starting to produce energy from the fat. And as it starts to produce energy from the fat, that's when it'll start burning faster. The does problem it is... It, does it get easier? Yes. I'm glad you had... That is a really important question to know. Yes, it does. Because at first, it'll start giving you a little bit. It's like, here you go, here's a little bit of energy. I know I'm going to be eating again soon, right? So here you go, there's a little bit more. Oh, there's a little bit more energy. But then you take it away completely, and your body's like, where am I getting this energy from? I need it from somewhere. So your body starts giving more and more in larger doses, okay? Those are what we call stages of ketosis. This right here is a keto stick. I want you all to pass these around. You'll notice that there's different colors indicating different levels of ketosis. Your body will register these. You have to do it fasted, like first thing in the morning when you get up, for the most accurate reading. It's looking for the hormone that's causing this trigger in the presence of fat within your body's urinalysis test strip, your kidneys. Okay. It's how fast is your body synthesizing fat into energy and then turning it into like exhaust, leftovers, excrements, okay? So this right here is how you're able to say, what stage am I in? Well, around day 10, you're going to creep into st stage 2 or 3. Around day 14 to 17, you should be sitting pretty hardcore into stage 4. Stage 4 is really where it's lubed up good. You don't want to go into stage five too dark. Stage four is where it's working, okay? It's working really hard. 
a lot of our cancer patients live their entire lives in stage four and five. And the reason why is because this starves the sugar in their body. When they're in this particular state, we encourage them to just stay into an alkaline state. The body cannot produce and cancer cannot thrive in a 7.8 pH or higher. Cannot. You have cancer, get your body into 7.8. You have a loved one that's in there. Let's say, look, let's eliminate acidity. No more vinegars. No more citrus. No more fruits with any kind of citrus. We have to stay entirely alkaline this whole process. This is where you got to eat your veggies. You eat your asparagus, your zucchini, your squash, stuff like that. Stuff You can't add a little squeeze of lemon to it. Okay? You have to have what's called antioxidants. You may hear them all the time. Cancer grows in an oxidative state where there's presence of oxygen. It grows faster. It grows four times faster. When you are obese or you have a lot of excess body fat, it grows faster because it starts feeding it, like blowing on hot coals in a fire. It grows faster and faster. Now, if you starve it from oxygen, it'll start to burn out, right? Take away the fuel source that allows cancer to grow, it grows faster. Now, I am talking internal cancers, not solar, sarcomas, stuff like that. Internal cancers that set into particular places like your liver, your colon, your digestive tract, kidney, uh, prostate, mammaries, those areas. Uh, lymph nodes is another area that can help with lymph node type cancers. However, skin cancers, it, it ha doesn't have the same effect. That's a completely different system, okay? However, if you can figure out that through nutrition you can fix these types of things, you'll be amazed that once you get into a, can a, a keto diet, it's actually pretty easy to maintain. If you look back here, we're going to look at the page that has the numbers here on top. Y'all go home, click on that keto buddy calculator, type in your information, it will tell you what the protein, what the carb, or you, you'll plug in the carbs, 20 grams, it's, that's going to be permanent, 20 grams or less, and it will tell you what the fat grams need to be. And then it will tell you up in the top, just above that, what the calories need to be. So you can't just focus on calories, right? right. You have to focus on the macronutritional value. Your body can only synthesize protein at a certain rate. The average person in lean protein like chicken, beef, uh, turkey, that meat protein, it can synthesize at about 10 grams per hour. Okay? Vegetable proteins, however, will burn faster. It'll burn at about 35 grams per hour. So different stages. Egg whites are a different kind of protein that's in between vegetable and the meat. Okay? It'll, it'll synthesize somewhere around 17 to 20 grams in an hour. Now, if you're the kind of person who exercises regularly, you take a blend of these types of proteins. It's got quick burn energy for fast energy. It's got intermediate energy that kind of helps you through the recovery process. And then it's got that long-term protein that burns a little bit longer throughout the process. A lot of our runners do this. Our bodybuilders that are trying to get bigger, they do this kind of stuff with their pre-workout so that they can get that caffeine jolt that they need to get and go, but they burn all that glycogen out super fast. And then they have to revert back to that protein for that long-term energy, those amino acids for repairs, stuff like that. All right. Now you have this entire list of ingredients here. There's some that are labeled not keto friendly. You can go through there if you want and find out what is your portion size is supposed to be like. Now at the Clean Eatery as a nutritionist, I do this for every one of my clients. I plug all this in, I adjust all the portions. You see that came out of nowhere. Uh, and then when I adjust all these portions, I go through and have very similar but streamlined version of this conversation with every one of them about why it's important for them to take certain types of supplements based on their body type. Through deductive logic, we're able to come to, the, uh, to a decision whether they have a high functioning liver 
whether they have an insulin sensitivity, and be able to put the right portions in front of them. Our job is basically to do all this work. And all we do is deliver it to their home every day. And every day, these clients get it. All they have to do is eat it. Okay? So if you flip over here to this menu page like this. I think it's on the back of one of these here. So these here are different recipes that we send out to people. So on Monday, they may get menu one. On Tuesday, they'll have menu two. On Wednesday, they'll have menu three. And it tells them that in what order to eat everything. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snack, fat bomb. Okay? You can do this at home if you want. Outline what it is that you need. Get in order your breakfast, lunch, dinner. In an uh, intermittent fasted routine, guess what? You eat breakfast and lunch at the exact same time. Or you eat lunch and dinner at the exact same time, and you can have Brenner, breakfast for dinner. Or you can eat three times within that six or eight hour window. The idea behind intermittent fasted isn't so much to try to get an eight hour window in, it's to get, start with an eight hour window, crunch it down to a seven, crunch it down to a six, crunch it down to a five, crunch it down to a four, crunch that down into a three hour window in which you eat. Okay, the rest of the time you're drinking water, you'll take your supplements, you'll work on cell detox so that your liver can burn out all of that extra stuff. And a lot of our athletes that are serious or a lot of our medical patients who are serious about recovering and gut health, eat one meal a day, except it's the nutritional value of all of these meals in one. Okay, so it's not a starvation diet. You aren't starving. The feeling of starving is really a feeling of habitual eating. It's why smokers are constantly smoking. It's because they get into that habit. It's not about the stimulants, it's about the habits. So being able to recreate new habits. These are different examples here, and these are actually just a simple guide for people to look at on the refrigerator and go, there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I know what I'm having every single day. There are no cheap meals on a keto diet, so you have to plan them out in food. There are no cheats. You don't get a Friday night's my birthday, I'm gonna have a slice of cake. You're gonna undo two weeks worth of work because now you just cost yourself 10 more days to get back into ketosis because you cheated once. You don't get cheap wine. You know, you don't get to go have a, a, a Jolly Rancher. You know, all that stuff's gone. Get rid of it. You gotta get rid of all those habits. It may suck, but by rewriting a new one. So this page that you see here that has all of the recipe ingredients and stuff, it breaks it down into quantity of ounces or quantity of each. And by each it means like uh, how many eggs or how many you know, of one particular thing. You see it? Cool. It tells you what it is. Now where it says stuff like butter, that means that's how it may be cooked. We actually use ghee, not butter. It's just my computer says butter in there. So we use ghee or you can use clarified butter, like good quality stuff. Don't do margarine, it's not real. It, it's pure bad fats, okay? But that's usually how we cook stuff. So when you're gonna scramble eggs together, you want a little bit of creaminess, right? You want, you know, a tablespoon or two of the heavy whipping cream based on the portions, so you can fluff it up. You know, you wanna make it taste good and be nice and fluffy. Uh, let's see here. Smoked sausage, egg, heavy whipping cream, a little bit of butter. You just whisk it all together. You can have scrambled eggs. Down at the bottom, you'll see here, pork chops, cauliflower mash, mushroom gravy, and butter. Cauliflower mash, when you prepare it right, you soak it in water, then you pour that water off, and that removes that cauliflower taste that people doesn't, that you, that you just don't like. You pour it off. And then you pull it out and then you blend it all together, mash it all after it's been steeped, you know, nice and soft, just like broccoli. 
And then when you can add your seasonings in there, it tastes just like mashed potatoes. It's just minus all those, what's the word? Sugar. We're, releasing, we're, we're getting rid of all that sugar that your body doesn't need. But if you'll look over here in these little columns on the side, you'll see where it says calories, protein, carbs. Okay? It'll tell you how many carbohydrates per cup or ounce or tablespoon it has. And these are the net carbs. Okay? Anyway, uh, that menu page that we were just looking at, like this, these are just extracting the information that are on these. That's all it is. So when our kitchen goes to work and our chefs are cooking stuff up, they have to be able to portion each person's out just the right way. That means that chef sits over there, makes that one dish, portions it up for that individual, and that's that one. Now we do about 30,000 dishes a week right now. That means a chef is sitting there reading these all day long, trying to combine groups and stuff of what each person needs specifically so that they can meet these production needs. We deliver to 2,800 homes a day as a business in two hours. We've been able to grow over the past six years to be able to do this stuff because people have a need of stuff like this, but they don't have the knowledge or the time or the ability to go grocery shop, buy all the ingredients, use a little bit, and the rest goes to waste, right? How often do you buy groceries and then your vegetables are bad, you know, at the end of the week? You know, you're like, dang, I spent 150 bucks on groceries this week. I had to throw out, you know, half the spinach and zucchini and my bell peppers started to mold on the inside, right? You didn't want that to happen. It just, that's part of natural life, right? Now, we as a business are a non-GMO and organic-based business with no nitrates. We also do uh, no preservatives within our food. So when we send food out, it's meant to be eaten, you know, within two, three days. Like, it's not a, it's not a, you know, hungry man dinner. It's not one of those McLean's frozen dinners and stuff like that. This is the life you live so that you don't have to worry about the other stuff. Okay, so with all that being said, I saved the very last for us to be able to do this kind of stuff. I brought a couple other supplements here. This here is a glycolog. I want you to pass this around. This one here is a supplement that is an inhibitor. It causes your body's insulin to say, oh, that's not sugar. Don't produce insulin. And it kicks it straight to the bowels. Oh, I'm going to raise a red flag. I'm just going to throw it over there, okay? This one right here is a male testosterone helper. A lot of men lose a lot of hair because of testosterone issues. This helps create a healthy testosterone uh, balance within the body. It's male stronger. Generally speaking, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> so male pattern baldness is usually derived from missing uh, testosterone doses at certain levels. Uh, I myself have a certain recessive gene for male pattern baldness and so it sucks because I was just fine until I was about 35 and then it all fell out and I was like who's that guy and I'm not used to looking at him you know it's really kind of a tough thing I wish I could pull off the clean look man I shaved it all off it didn't work <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys have any questions at this point? I know I've thrown a lot at you, okay? I've thrown at you insulin resistance, spiking, blood sugar, good foods, bad foods, healthy proteins, not healthy proteins, carbohydrates, good, bad, the fats, good, bad. What questions do you have about a keto program that you didn't learn in a keto one-on-one? -on -one? Is it something you can do for the rest of your life? Absolutely. Yes. The human body for the past 28,000 years has run on fats. And since 1907, when they came up with the first food preservative, actual chemical balanced food preservative that was a carbohydrate base, human body has never been the same based on availability. Is it safe to drink alcohol, food, like 
It is. <laughs> so let me let me re answer that question. Are there alcohols that you can have to fit within the parameters? Yes, there are. So let's go that way. Ask the question differently. What alcohols can I have and in what portions? There are clear alcohols that you can have. Vodka, gin, rum. Uh, rum is going to have the higher sugar content, so you want to drink it straight. You don't do mixers with it. Uh, you, if you're trying to follow an alkaline routine, like most of our people I encourage, you can't do the citrus added into a lot of it. So uh, a lot of people like to do a vodka and lime or something. It, it can be, yes. I'm a scotch drinker, so uh, just two ounces of that's got me, you know, I enjoy the taste of it. So it took a lifetime to build. <laughs> you can have up to about like three or four ounces. Uh, you can't do wine, red wine out the out of the question, you know, mixed cocktails, stuff like that out of the question. If you need a mixer of some sort, you know, ice, water, uh, carbonate, you know, the carbonated water, not tonic, vodka soda, you know, but also limit how much you're going to have. Uh, with a lot of our programs, I write people at a 20 grams, as you see in your, in your example there. I write it at 20 grams of carbohydrates because that allows fluctuation room for certain things. You know, if you decide today uh, that you want to have a drink or something like that, or if you want to add, say, maybe a quarter of, of an avocado, like the fruit of the avocado to your program, people can do that. As a business, we don't send out avocados to our clients, uh, but I do recommend people that carry them, you know, use them. Uh, it's, it's a tolerance of about five grams. Uh, you asked, can you do this for a lifetime? To answer that question, yeah, you can. I've been doing it for two and a half years because I have hypothyroidism. My thyroid doesn't respond to my pituitary gland to convert T3 into T4. It doesn't synthesize it. And when a doctor tries to diagnose me, they try to give me synthetic or synthroid, synthroid, which is a synthetic hormone. Unfortunately, it's T3. I don't have a problem with T3. I have a problem with conversion of T4. So what that means is that my body, even if they were to prescribe me this as a Band-Aid, isn't going to speed that up. I still can only process so much at a time. So it's better for me to follow a healthy routine on a regular basis so that I can control my body's insulin production. Mm-hmm. Not really. I mean, it's lung capacity, oxygenation, that type of thing. Uh, I quit smoking cold turkey after 17 years. I decided I was done, and I just quit. I was like, I think I'm just done. I was like, I don't want to do it. So, uh, but food tastes differently to me now than it did back then. Does it taste better? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I became a, a certified executive chef. I've won Iron Chef twice now. And so by going through those processes, like your palate changes, it evolves by being exposed to different things. And sometimes your palate, you can't pick up certain things when you're a smoker. You tend to salt everything or use heavier doses of oils or you know, butter and stuff like that because that's what you taste. Because that's what your scent receptors can pick up. Uh, you kind of like having a cold and you can't taste anything, yeah. or having an earache and you can't taste food, you know what I mean? Uh, same thing with cigarette smoking, just tastes different. I have a lot of questions. Sure. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm gonna make time to visit with folks. So, I mean, I'll give you at least a half hour. <laughs> so, I'm gonna do this while we talk. This here is shredded chicken, okay? Just shredded chicken. You can buy a whole rotisserie bird if you like and just take your time to pull it. White meat, dark meat, doesn't matter. It's all good. 
You can take a little bit of this Red's hot sauce, or if you prefer Louisiana or whatever it is, and just add a healthy dose. I usually add about a half a bottle to kind of get things started. Uh, if you like to spice it up a little bit, chop up some jalapenos and toss it in there. Does anybody want spicy? I figured you said anybody not want spicy? No objections. Okay. I got a question, Chef. Yes, sir. I got a question, Chef. I got an answer. I got a question, Chef. <clears throat> was that on was that Iron Chef on the Food Network? No, it was Arkansas. <laughs> For Arkansas. Okay, so you can dry your bacon. Okay, we're gonna add some bacon in here. This is a dehydrated bacon. And you can chop it up. I like to carry these little scissors around. I didn't know if they'd let me into the city hall today carrying a knife, really. So I knew y'all had scissors here. So based on your diet, it'll tell you, you know, what your portions are supposed to be. So if you're gonna make some for the whole entire week, you just multiply the whatever that is out times so many days, and that portion will tell you how many you can have. Make sense? Now some people like to add cream cheese to this, which you can do. I'm gonna add blue cheese today. You got your scallion. Scallion's your green onion. Pretty simple. We're just gonna chop that into there. Anybody have an aversion to onion? It's too late anyway. Okay, you can add as many or as little as you like for your preference because that's considered a no carb food. Uh, I've got some minced red onion here. Minced red onion adds a little bit of spiciness to it without overdoing it. Now if you look at your chart, you'll also notice red onion is a carbohydrate. Sugar. That's right. If it caramelizes, it's sugar. And we're going to take our blue cheese. Usually it'll say a couple tablespoons of blue cheese or so. And this here is enough for, I brought it for 20, 25 persons there. Okay. And then we're just going to take this and we're just going to break it up. We're going to soak up all of that flavor. Now, those of you who like to make your own hot sauce, it's a little bit of cayenne and vinegar, a little bit of garlic, all right, just like that. I'm going to throw a little bit more of this in there. Who doesn't like blue cheese? Don't care for it, but you'll eat it. You will eat it today. She said, today I will. So this isn't much different. You can do this with, uh, you can do this with pestos. How many of you like pesto? You know there's different kinds of pesto, right? Bad pesto and good pesto. <laughs> there can be bad pesto. Pesto is just the Italian word for green sauce. It's kind of like in Spanish, the word chili verde means green sauce. You know, uh, so that's that. I'm just going to start kind of put this on a plate for everybody. Or if you guys want to come up here, we can get a plate and we can get you a deviled egg or something like that. Any other questions? I'm sorry. <laughs> I missed that. <clears throat> okay. Have this into a 
So the first thing I can say is know your body's portions. Because when you go anywhere, there will always be a restaurant that offers, you know, eggs, bacon, you know, chicken, stuff like that. When you, get a, when you get used to what your portions are supposed to be in your personal lifestyle, if yours says three ounces, and you know that when you go out to eat somewhere, the menu says, you know, six ounce portions, well, you know that when you get it, you can only have half of it. Does that make sense? Uh, ask for dressings or sauces on the side. That way you can eliminate those additional carbohydrates. If you're going to go to places that have sauces that you prefer, look for stuff that are gluten-free like soy sauce, yeah, see, take stuff you, like that with you. That's why you see they prep our food and serve our food because we're at the track all day. Mm -hmm. And it's always pasta and lasagna. And that's quick, easy catering for bulk and masses. If you're going to follow this lifestyle, you just have to be prepared to do the lifestyle. Uh, what other people provide for you, if they provide more vegetables for you at that particular event, you know, try to load up on vegetables for the time being if they have it available. Uh, I hate to say eat more salads, but usually that's their go-to, you know. If they offer asparagus or whatnot, then do it. If you go out to eat the night before, you know, specifically order a side of asparagus to go. Uh, a lot of times hotel restaurants and stuff like that, you can order stuff like that. Um, these containers here are super helpful. Uh, I take these in my little bag. This is called a six-pack bag. The design of this is specifically for three containers here. They make them in over-the-shoulder bags, purses, you know, laptop travel bags, uh, briefcases, and this has inserted uh, freezer packs so you can take that with you. So when I'm out, my day starts at 3 in the morning. I'm at the gym by 4.30. I'm usually out of the gym by 6, I'm at the store by 6.30, I'm at the store till noon, 1 o'clock, and then I go out and do my service and stuff, and then I'll go back to the gym, or I got my kid to take here or there, or whatever we have to in the evening, and I, I usually get home around 9 at night, so 4 a.m. to 9 at night takes a lot out of me, so I have to be prepared. Where did you get that? I got that at Seymour Results over on uh, Bowman Curve. Uh, as a meal prep company, we deliver directly to your home fresh every day. So people that travel and go out of town have something they can take with them. So when we do this kind of stuff, on a keto diet we deliver two days a week. We deliver four days worth of food on Monday, specifically designed for them to last Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then as early as Friday. And then we deliver again Thursday night so that way they can have it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And it creates a seven day loop, but it's always prepared fresh and delivered, you know, within those macros and guidelines. So that all they have to do is follow it. They just take it with them, you know. And the objective here is if you are lean enough to be able to maintain ketosis regularly, that's one thing. But if you're not gonna be in ketosis, then you just need to follow a healthy guideline. You don't need to be adding a whole bunch of extra fats. But just as a rule of thumb, by cutting carbs in any capacity, your body's gonna automatically start to eat body fat. It just may do it slower than ketosis allows. When you're in ketosis, your body burns fat nine times faster. Can you imagine driving nine times faster than the speed limit? What's the speed limit through here? The speed limit's about 65, 70. Do that nine times faster. Can you do 500 miles an hour through this town? Oh, no. That's how fast your metabolism is going when you're in fat burning mode. You know, put it in terms that you can understand there. Ketosis is, is an ether. It burns through it really fast. That's why a lot of times people will start into this diet. They'll be like, I lost 14 pounds in 10 days. Yeah, most of it's bowels your liver depletion, your glycogen depletion. People like me, my liver, uh, my liver holds almost 14,000 calories in reserve. It's healthy for a person to carry, carry one to 2,000. My liver doesn't. My liver literally will absorb all of that. Uh, and I discovered this because I did a 30 day water fast where I had nothing but water for 30 days. And it took me 11 days for my body's 
stored glycogen to be completely depleted. And my resting basal metabolic rate is around 2,300 calories. So just sitting around, I'll burn 2,300 calories a day, sitting in one seat all day. So you do that math you know, out times 11 days, you find out how much extra you store in your liver. You know, three, three pounds of extra liver fat is what you can store. Mm -hmm.